Hi there, I've edited and colour graded almost 200 videos now in DaVinci Resolve, but I still remember first opening up the colour page and realising what the heck is going on here. So I understand how overwhelming it can be if you're just getting started with colour grading in DaVinci Resolve. But don't worry, I'm going to take things super slow in this tutorial. And by the end of it, you'll have a better understanding of how nodes work in DaVinci Resolve when you're colour grading. And I think you'll feel a lot more confident going and colour grading your own videos. I'm going to head into Resolve now. And I've got a couple of clips here that we're going to colour grade. Let's head over to the colour page. And by default, we get a single node here. You can think of nodes in DaVinci Resolve as individual places where you can perform one or more different things that you want to do to the image, whether it be change the colours or make it brighter or darker, that kind of thing. While you can mix lots of different things into one node, you're usually better to have separate nodes for separate things just so you can try things and to make it easier to undo things and also to make it easier to copy changes to other clips, basically just to stay organized in DaVinci Resolve and also organized in your own brain and remember exactly what's happening to your colors. If you wanna see all of the clips in your timeline, click this button here and we've just got these two clips. Each clip here has its own node tree, but there's lots of different ways that you can share color grades between different clips got an entire video dedicated to that which I'll link to in the description. There's loads of different tools in DaVinci Resolve that you can use. We're currently in these primaries or these color wheels. There's also this HDR palette that you can choose from and there's an RGB mixer, there's motion effects, there's so much you can do but we're going to keep things simple so you want to click on these color wheels and we're just going to work with these four primary controls for the most part. We'll get to those in just a second. The first thing to realize in DaVinci Resolve is that you're kind of working with a pipeline. You have some video data coming into a node, the node does something with that video data, and then it spits out that modified data out of that node and possibly into another node. And as we've got here, we've only got a single node. So whatever comes out of this node to this green dot here is what gets rendered in the final output video. This green dot here is the incoming data from whichever clip we're working with. The first thing we need to do is come up to the file menu and come down and choose project settings. What we need to do is make sure that the color settings are set up for the way we're going to work. So click on color management here and you're going to want to have this set to DaVinci YRGB and not color managed. I've got an entire video on color managed workflows, which we don't have to worry about for this video. So set this to DaVinci YRGB, set the timeline color space to DaVinci WG Intermediate. WG stands for wide gamut. And this is just a way of expressing a bigger space to make changes in, but don't worry about that too much for this video. And finally, set your output color space to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Again, there's different choices and different subtleties that you can choose here, but this is a good starting point. I will just quickly say though, no matter what kind of color grading you're working with, you should always try and have your color grading monitor match your settings here. Specifically, you want your color grading monitor to be set to and preferably calibrated to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So once you've set these settings up, you can click save and come back to the color page. Now what we want to do is we want to take the color information from the clip that we're working with and we want to transform it into that DaVinci WG or wide gamut intermediate space, make all of our changes in that working space or that way of working and then change them back to the video file that we want to export, in this case, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. So we're going to need two nodes to do this. To add a node, you can right click on the node, come down and choose Add Node. And there's lots of different nodes here. We're just going to work with serial nodes. If you click Add Serial, it will add a new node after this first one. And you can see these are numbered. This is the first node, and this is the node we just added. I'm going to move this node over here and we're going to leave this node at the start. To make more space for the nodes, you can just drag this across and turn off clips. So in this first node, what we want to do is we want to take the incoming video data 
and transform it so it's in a state that we can work with. Now, in this case, I know that this particular clip was shot on a Sony A7S III in something called S-Log3, which is a log filming mode. If you're just using normal filming modes on whatever camera you're color grading, don't worry. We'll look at that in the next clip that we grade. So we need to open up the effects here. And in these effects, there's something called a color space transform. Drag this effect onto this first node. And then you can see the settings open up here. A color space transform takes the video in one kind of data format and transforms it to another kind of data format. It's a technical transformation, so it's not really about how things look. It's more about converting the low level bits or bytes into a different format. So in our case, I know that the clip that we're working with here was shot using a color space of Sony S Gamut 3 Cine and an input gamma of Sony S Log 3. And as soon as I change that, notice that the image has changed a bit here. For the output color space, we're going to set this to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate to match those settings we set up in the project settings earlier. So now what this first node spits out of here is video data in this format, DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. Before we finish up the color grading, we need to transform the data from DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate into whatever we expect to be in the output format represented by this dot. So we grab another color space transform and add it to this node. And this time, because we're working with DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, we set the input color space, that's what's coming into this node, to be DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and the output color space to whatever we're going to export. In our case, it's going to be Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. And straight away now, you can see the effect that's had. If I select both of these nodes by dragging over them and use Control D on the keyboard, it will disable these nodes. And this is what S-Log3 looks like before we do any technical transforms on it. And if I hit Control D again, this is what it looks like once we've technically converted S-Log3 to Rec 709. So we can now close the effects section by clicking on effects to make a bit more space for us. If it helps to keep things organized in your brain, you can right click on a node and click node label and then give it some kind of meaningful thing to you. So here we can say to DaVinci wide gamut and this last node, we can click node label and maybe we say to rec 7. Oh, nine. Now we're not going to do any color grading changes in these two nodes. These are just technical transformations. We're going to do all of the color grading in some new nodes. Click on the first node, right click and choose add node, add serial, or alternatively, you can hit alt S on the keyboard. And this will add a serial node after the node we had selected. And we can move these around. It doesn't matter where you move the individual nodes. It just matters how they're connected together with these lines. In this beginner node tree, what we're going to do is we're just going to make use of three nodes and each node is going to perform a specific job. Now you can go crazy with node trees, but we're going to keep things simple in this demo just so you can get an idea of what you can do. In this first node, we're going to deal with how bright or how dark the image is, or in other words, the exposure. So we can give this a label of exposure. I'm going to right click and I'm going to add another serial node. I'm going to give this a label of contrast and right click again and choose add serial. And we're going to give this a label of color. Okay, let's start actually color grading this image. And by color grading, I mean the actual changes to how we want the image to look. So we're gonna start off with exposure. There's many different ways to alter exposure in DaVinci Resolve. We're just going to be using the offset here. The offset you can think of as the master control for the whole image, whereas the lift controls more of the darker regions. You can make them darker or brighter. And for all of these, you can click this button to reset the individual thing or click this button to reset all of these dials. 
the gamma section you can think of as making the the mid-tones darker or lighter and you can think of gain as altering the brighter areas in the image either making brighter areas brighter or brighter areas darker and all i'm doing here is i'm holding down the left mouse button on these kind of wheels and then with the left mouse button held down i'm just moving left and right with the mouse let's just reset everything now there are more technical ways of adjusting exposure than using the offset but again we're keeping things simple so if i look at this image in my color grading monitor i can see that maybe it looks a tiny bit too dark so i'm going to hold down the left mouse button and i'm just going to bring this down a bit and you might notice at the bottom right hand here we've got what are called scopes and these give us different ways of visualizing the image data. So the scope that's currently being displayed is this waveform. And this is a useful way to monitor how bright different parts of the image are. And this moves from left to right. So on the left side of the image here shows you the left side on the scopes. And where my face is here is showing this area here. So this data here is really representing my face and my body in this area up and down of the image so let's say we're happy with that exposure we can now click on the contrast node and we can start to adjust the contrast and contrast is just the relationship between the darker and brighter areas of the image there's a few different ways we can change contrast in davinci resolve but for this tutorial we're going to use this contrast setting here you can either click on this double click on it and type in a number or you can hold down the mouse button on the word contrast and then move the mouse left and right to change the value if you increase the value, it's going to add more and more and more contrast to the image until it looks terrible like that. And if you go less than one, it's going to actually reduce the contrast of the entire image. The pivot is related to the contrast and it determines the point at which the contrast kind of moves around. We don't really need to worry about that too much for this tutorial. So for this node, we're going to increase the contrast to get things looking a bit more interesting something like that for example one really cool tip is that you can enable and disable individual nodes especially if you're just using one node for one change just to get an idea of what's happening so if we wanted to see what the color grade looks like without the exposure node active click on it hold down ctrl and press d on the keyboard and use ctrl d to re-enable it and do this for contrast that's with the contrast adjustment ctrl d without the contrast adjustment Control D again to turn it back on, and that's with contrast. The third node here is the node that we're going to use to modify the colors in the image. And because DaVinci Resolve is used for most blockbusters, there's a million different ways you can alter the colors in DaVinci Resolve. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to use the little dot in the middle of this offset control. What you want to do is click and hold down the mouse button on this dot in the middle, and if you move this dot around, it's going to change the colors in the image. If I move this dot up and to the left, you can see the image gets really orange. If I move it down and to the right, it gets really blue. Over here are the greens, and over here are the magentas. You can double click the dot to reset it, or click this button here. I'm going to start off by grabbing this dot and just moving it ever so slightly down and to the right just to cool off the image a little bit. If I hit Ctrl D to disable this, this is the before and this is after. This is before and this is after. And remember that color grading is kind of a mix between science and art. And while there is such a thing as quote, correct skin tones or skin colors, there's also a subjective element to it as well. So I'm happy with that. And the final thing I want to show you in this color node, and we could actually add a separate node for it if we wanted to, is to alter the overall saturation of the colors or how punchy the colors look. You can do this using this sat control here. Hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse to the left to lower the saturation. And if you take it all the way to zero, we get a black and white image. Double click to reset it to the default value of 50 and increase it to increase the saturation. And if you increase the saturation too much, the image just kind of looks a bit crazy and looks a little bit like we're visiting the Willy Wonka chocolate factory. So double click to reset. And I just want to add the smallest amount of saturation here 
and that's almost unnoticeable. All right, let's move on to the second clip and there's a small change we need to make. I'm gonna click on clips at the top here and then click the second clip. There's a really quick way that you can copy nodes from one clip to the other. So select the clip that you want to copy the nodes to, move your mouse over the clip that contains the nodes you want to copy, and then simply just click the middle mouse button, and this will copy all of the nodes, and then we can just click clips at the top to close that. So you can see that this looks terrible, and why does it look so, so bad? The reason is this second clip was not shot using S-Log3. So this settings, or this node, doesn't contain the right information. If we open up the effects, we need to change the input color space to Rec709 and the input gamma also to Rec709. And as soon as we do that, we get a more normal looking image and we can close the effects. If you're editing video that was shot in a normal picture profile or a normal mode or the default settings on pretty much any camera, you're probably going to be color grading video that was shot in something called Rec 709, which is not a log format. And it means we don't have to do the same kind of log conversion. We can just bring in that Rec 709 data into DaVinci Wide Gamut and then color grade it and then convert it back out to Rec 709, which is exactly what the second node is doing. So we don't need to change this because the input to this node is still DaVinci Wide Gamut. So I hope that kind of makes sense. And all we have to do now is adjust the settings for these three nodes. If you want to reset a node completely, right click on it and choose Reset Node Grade. And we can do that for all three of these just to get back to a beginning view of this image. Then we can start with exposure here. Maybe we want to bring this up just a little bit to open it up a bit. And then we can come on to contrast. Once again, use the contrast control to modify the contrast a bit. And this is where you can use pivot just to control how that contrast is being applied. That's before and after, very subtle. And finally, we'll work with the colors. And we probably don't wanna to do too much here. Maybe for this image, we actually want to move up and to the left just to warm things up. And maybe we want to really increase the saturation to get a really overblown look, something like that. If you click this button here, it will bypass all of the color grading and show you the before and click it again to show you the after. So again, we've gone a bit further here with the color changes, but this is more of an artistic interpretation. So other than the two color space transform nodes, we're only really using three nodes to perform the actual aesthetic color grading of this image. And of course you can add as many nodes as you want and there's all kinds of extra complicated things you can do such as parallel nodes. I will be doing more of an intermediate level video showing an intermediate level node graph and actually the node graph that I use personally in almost every YouTube video. And that's gonna be a future video so make sure you subscribe if that's something that's going to be interesting for you. But certainly if you're just getting started with DaVinci Resolve color grading, this simple basic node tree will probably get you 80% to where you want to be.